you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego, and welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast. And in today's episode, we are going to keep on grinding through these amazing chapters of the book, Good Energy by authors Dr. Casey Means and Brother Callie Means. We've gone through the book about five chapters so far. It's been uh, enlightening to say the least. And today we're diving into a crucial chapter that really hits home for many of us the principles of good energy eating. We've talked about what creates good energy, what causes bad energy. And this chapter, it's an eye opener. It starts with a striking story from the author's residency days. Opioid crisis versus food addiction. Check it out. Imagine this. A patient is infuriated. I want to talk to your effing manager. She starts the chapter off. Because the doctor, Dr. Casey Means, she wouldn't refill this patient's opioid prescription. He was irate. It's a stark reminder of the opioid crisis that's taken countless lives, often starting with a simple prescription. But there's another, more hidden addiction crisis that affects almost all of us. The addiction to ultra-processed foods. These foods are just as harmful, if not more so, causing over a million deaths annually. The NIH defines addiction as a chronic, relapsing disorder characterized by compulsive drug-seeking and use despite adverse consequences. Chronic relapsing disorder characterized by compulsive drug-seeking and use despite adverse consequences. This description fits modern industrial food consumption to a T. Despite our best intentions, many of us are trapped in a cycle of compulsive eating that's leading to chronic health issues like prediabetes and obesity. It's a collective food addiction. Let's break down the confusion. So how do we break free from this cycle? The solution is surprisingly simple. We have to promote unprocessed whole foods, and we have to discourage ultra-processed foods. But with so many terms to navigate, organic, plant-based, natural, non-GMO, it the list goes on and on. It's no wonder the average consumer is confused. I spend most of my time studying health, fitness, wellness, and I am confused on a daily basis. It's time to strip away the labels and just look at the food for what it truly is, a set of molecular components. And understanding these components can help us make better choices for our health. Let's start with a clear example. A glass of water it hydrates you. A glass of water with arsenic in it will kill you. When it comes to food, it's not always that clear cut, but the principle remains the same. Take a burger, for instance. The molecular makeup of a burger varies greatly depending on its source. Beef from a cow raised on an industrial farm on an all-grain diet is different than beef from a cow raised on a pasture eating pesticide-free grass, which is also different from beef alternatives like Beyond Burger or the Impossible Burger. Each version delivers different molecular information to our cells. Grass-fed beef, for example, is higher in anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids and essential, essential micronutrients like vitamin A, vitamin E, and beta carotene. And in contrast, a grain fed beef burger contains fewer omega 3s and is more inflammatory because it has more omega 6 fats 
The Beyond Burger, made with pea protein and canola oil, has its own set of molecular components, including processed ingredients that may not be as beneficial as a, let's say, grass-fed cow raised on a pasture. Empowering yourself with food means seeing beyond all the labels and the marketing and understanding how food components build functional cellular health. Let's take broccoli for an example. It's more than just a green vegetable. It is a powerhouse of molecular components that support good energy. It does this by reducing oxidative stress, by reducing chronic inflammation, and by reducing mitochondrial dysfunction. It's high fiber content, vitamins, and antioxidants all play a role in keeping your cells healthy. Your daily decisions matter. Every day, we make hundreds of micro decisions about food that can change our genetic and our physiological fate. Unfortunately, many of us receive vague dietary advice from experts and doctors like eat more fruits and vegetables without understanding the profound impact of these choices. What is the why behind that message? Nutrition is often dismissed in medical training. Despite the fact that natural foods contain thousands of phytochemicals, these small little molecules that impact health and function as medicine. It's crazy. The power of food, the food that we consume daily profoundly impacts our health. Every thought, every feeling, every function in our body is influenced by what we eat. From our earliest development in the womb, food is the foundation of our being. Contrary to the popular belief that our genes are our destiny, it's our diet that actually shapes our health outcomes. It's our lifestyle choices that shape our health outcomes. Genetics play a factor. Lifestyle and diet play a much, much, much larger factor. Food chemicals act as signaling molecules that can influence gene expression and cellular function, determining whether our cells produce good energy. It's called epigenetics. You have the genes, but what decides what genes get turned on in which ways? Your diet, your lifestyle. Here's a hopeful takeaway. We have the power to change our health outcomes through our food choices. By understanding the molecular makeup of what we eat, we can then make informed decisions that promote good energy and overall well-being. So why ultra-processed foods are so addictive? Let's talk about it. One of the key reasons why ultra-processed foods are so addictive is that they have been engineered to be hyper-palatable. This means that they are designed to taste incredibly good, often by combining high levels of sugar, salt, and fat. A great book written by Michael Moss, Sugar, Salt, and Fat. This combination can hijack our brain's reward system, similar to how addictive drugs work, making it difficult to stop eating these foods once we start. Once you pop, you just can't stop. The role of food labels. Food labels can often be misleading, making it difficult to make healthy choices. Terms like natural, organic, gluten-free are so frequently used. Try this gluten-free sugar cube. Try this organic Skittles. I don't know. what You know what I'm talking about. They use these words just so as a marketing ploy, but they don't necessarily mean that the food is healthy. For instance, a product labeled organic can still be super high in sugar or unhealthy fats, and it's important to look beyond these labels and focus on the actual ingredients and nutritional content of the food. Not to mention, sometimes they'll play with the serving size, so then you have to be a mathematical genius in order to figure out all the little tiny th ways that they're trying to make this food look as healthy as possible or as enticing for you to buy as possible. The impact of omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids. If we go a little bit deeper into the impact of these fatty acids, omega-3s and omega-6s on our health, omega-3 fatty acids found in foods like grass-fed beef, 
fatty fish, flax seeds, stuff like that are known for their anti-inflammatory properties, omega-3s. They play a crucial role in brain health, reducing inflammation, and supporting heart health. While on the other hand, if we look at omega-6 fatty acids, these are abundant in things like grain-fed beef and many other processed foods. This can promote inflammation when consumed in excess. The balance between these two types of fats is crucial for maintaining good health. If we look at phytochemicals, phytochemicals are compounds found in plants that have various health benefits. These include antioxidants, which protect our cells from damage, and anti-inflammatory compounds, which help reduce chronic inflammation in the body. So foods like fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds are rich in phytochemicals and should be a regular part of your diet to support good energy. Going back to the science of epigenetics, epigenetics is the study of how our environment and how our behaviors can affect the way that our genes work. Unlike genetic changes, which are permanent, epigenetic changes are reversible. This means that by making healthy lifestyle choices, such as eating a nutrient-rich diet, we can positively influence our gene expression and we can improve our health we can control our destiny. This is a powerful reminder that we are not at the mercy of our genes. Just because your dad had it, just because you it runs in your family, we are not at the mercy of our genes. We have the ability to shape our health outcomes through our actions and choices and behaviors. And finally, micronutrients, the importance of micronutrients, including vitamins and minerals. These are essential for various bodily functions. They support our immune function, our energy production, our brain health, among other things. A diet rich in diverse whole foods ensures that we get an adequate supply of all these vital nutrients. For example, vitamin C is found in fruits and vegetables, which helps to protect our mitochondria from oxidative stress, while vitamin D, which can be attained from sunlight and other certain foods, this is a crucial hormone, or also called vitamin D, for immune function and bone health. All of these things matter. We're gonna go into six principles of good energy eating. And principle number one is food determines the structure and the function of our cells and our microbiome. Food determines the structure and function of our cells and microbiome. This principle lays the foundation for understanding how the right food choices can build a healthier, more energetic body. The building blocks of our bodies. Our, our bodies are entirely built from the food that we consume. Every meal breaks down into little components in our gut, which are then absorbed into our bloodstream to continually rebuild our body. Providing the right bricks through our diet ensures we build the right structures for optimal health. Food as structure. So let's talk about dietary fats in our cell membranes. Cell membranes are crucial for aspects of health. They are composed of fatty layers studded with cholesterol molecules and proteins. These act as receptors, as anchors, and channels. Modern industrial diets have dramatically altered the structure of our cell membranes due to the high intake of omega-6 fatty acids from processed vegetables and seed oils. Ideally, we need a balance of omega-3 and omega-6 fats. Omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory and promote membrane elasticity, while omega-6 fats promote inflammation. Adjusting dietary intake can change the membrane ratio in just a few days as cell membranes turn over rapidly in the body. So you can, do, you can make these changes quickly. If we look at food as a functional message, food isn't just about structure, it's also about acting like a functional messenger. It can activate or it can inhibit genetic pathways deep inside our body. Food can act like a hormone at 
hormone receptors and directly create or alleviate oxidative stress. For example, eating spices like turmeric minimizes chronic inflammation and cruciferous vegetables reduce oxidative stress. These foods can help as a functional message. These cruciferous vegetables, they have something called isothiocyanates and isothiocyanates, they're found in things like broccoli, which help combat oxidative stress, a key factor, one of the big three in the bad energy process. They promote this expression of antioxidant genes by activating proteins that bind to the genome, reducing oxidative damage and supporting good energy. Things like curcumin, curcumin, the active component in turmeric, blocks pro-inflammatory genes. It keeps inflammatory proteins inactive thus reducing chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation can damage the body and promote insulin resistance. So there you go. Curcumin helps a functional inactivation of pro-inflammatory genetic activity to help support good energy. The role of the microbiome. Our microbiome consists of trillions of bacteria that significantly influence our metabolic health. They influence our mood. They influence our longevity. The microbiome converts the food that we eat into chemicals that control our thoughts, that control our bodily functions. Insane. It's important that we properly feed our microbiome. Things like fiber, probiotic-rich foods, polyphenol-rich plants. This all supports robust gut health. It helps to minimize chronic inflammation and it generates metabolism supporting chemicals, things like short chain fatty acids. You can also give the, your mitochondria the boost that they need with something called urolithin A. Certain gut bacteria convert plant compounds found in food like pomegranates and some berries into urolithins such as urolithin A. This compound acts as an antioxidant and it stimulates mitophagy, which is a process that degrades and kills damaged and dying mitochondria. And then it supports overall cellular energy production with our strong and good mitochondria. So that's principle one. Principle one is food determines the structure and function of our cells and our microbiome. Principle two, principle two is eating is the process of matching cellular needs with oral inputs. Eating is the process of matching cellular needs with oral inputs. This principle emphasizes the importance of providing ourselves with the right materials that they need to function optimally. Now imagine the inside of your body, warm, wet, and dark. Most of your 37 trillion cells live in this warm, wet, and dark environment relying on nutrients that are just floating by to carry out their functions. Our cells, they can't see, they can't hear, they can't smell. They depend entirely on the signals that they receive through receptors and channels on their membrane. If the right nutrients float by, then your cells stay healthy and thus you stay healthy. If harmful substances float by, your cells get damaged, leading to symptoms and diseases. Eating is essentially a matching problem, matching the food inputs with your cells needs to produce the health that you need. If we don't properly match these inputs or we consume damaging substances, we end up with the symptoms and diseases that we currently see. Throughout our lives, we consume about 70 metric tons of food, 70 tons. 140,000 pounds, which continually rebuilds our bodies. The skin cells that we have turn over every six weeks. Our gut lining almost every week, all from the food that we eat and the signals that our food gives our cells. There are challenges in our modern diet that we already know about. Unfortunately, several factors have led to most of that 70 metric tons being either useless or actually harmful to our bodies. The first thing, nutrient depletion from industrial agriculture. 
Modern farming practices like monocropping and the tilling of the soil and the use of pesticides have significantly reduced the nutrient content of our food. A fruit or vegetable today has up to 40% fewer minerals, vitamins, and protein than it did 70 years ago. 40% less. Number two, nutrient degradation from long distance transportation. Food is transported over long distances and that creates them losing the nutrients. Every moment after they get picked off the vine, that thing is dying. By the time it gets to you, how long has it been dying? For example, some fruits and vegetables can lose up to 77% of their vitamin C just during the journey from farm to plate. 77% less vitamin C just by transportation, which is why some of the times it's better to get frozen fruits, like frozen blueberries, because they get picked and then they immediately get frozen, which starts to capture some of those nutrients. And then number three, high consumption of ultra processed foods. Most of the calories that we consume come from ultra processed foods, which are stripped of their nutrition. They're man-made. They're food like substances. About 60% or more of the calories consumed by adults in the U S over half are from these nutrient depleted, ultra processed foods. We have to start choosing high quality, unprocessed foods, giving ourselves the fuel that they need, the nutrients that they need, the signals that they need. Eating most of your food from high quality, unprocessed sources is so crucial. When you eat ultra processed foods, you slash the possibility of your cells getting what they need. Whole unprocessed foods are more likely to provide the necessary nutrients. Food grown in healthy, pesticide free soil, these foods offer the highest nutrient content and the least amount of harmful substances. Our cells have dynamic needs. The matching problem of eating for cellular needs is so dynamic and changes day to day and throughout different phases of life. It's really, really challenging and it's complicated. Think about the menstrual cycle during the second half of the menstrual cycle, the luteal phase, women tend to be more insulin resistant due to high progesterone levels, which can promote oxidative stress. During this time, focusing on antioxidant rich foods and minimizing high glycemic foods can help manage insulin resistance. So eating things like blueberries in this phase and avoiding things like pastas and breads and cakes and cookies can help manage insulin resistance. Of course, what about the psychological stress that sometimes you have in different phases of life? Times of increased psychological stress can deplete micronutrients like zinc and magnesium which are necessary for over hundreds of chemical reactions in the body. Supporting the body with additional micronutrients during stressful times can help minimize cellular dysfunction and even illness. So taking a zinc or a magnesium supplement, eating foods rich in zinc and magnesium, when you're in this stressed out state, that can be a dynamic need of your cells. And there are hundreds of examples like this. You have to make every bite count. Every bite that you take is an opportunity to communicate with your 37 trillion cells about what you expect them to do. Ensuring that your diet matches your cellular needs can optimize your health and your well being. Food is information, food is medicine, food is fuel. But food, we pretty much just use it as enjoyment these days and eating it because our hyper palatable sensations uh, drive us to continue to eat this way, it's taking us down a bad road. So principle number two is all about how eating is the process of matching your cellular needs with your oral input. Principle number three is food is how you communicate with your cells. So imagine your consciousness and your free will as a military general with your cells as the troops defending your life's integrity and safety. The messages that you send through food and the choices that you eat determine the quality and the clarity of this communication between the military general of your consciousness and free will and your troops, the cells of your body, ultimately impacting your health. 
The power of clear communication. In an optimal state, food sends clear messages to our cells about what our body needs to thrive. Different foods and behaviors can signal various actions to our cells. Omega-3 fatty acids found in salmon, sardines, chia seeds, walnuts. Omega-3s tell immune cells to put down your defenses, signaling that things are safe. Cruciferous vegetables, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, broccoli. Cruciferous vegetables communicate to the DNA that it's a tough time and defenses need to be increased. Leucine, an essential amino acid found in beef, pork, yogurt, lentils, almonds. Leucine signals to the muscles that it's time to build and grow. We need more muscle. Magnesium, found in pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, beans, leafy greens, avocados. Magnesium tells neurons to relax. Fiber, fiber communicates love and support to the microbiome. Intermittent fasting signals to the body that it's time to clean things up. Synthetic herbicides and pesticides, these send a harmful message to healthy gut bacteria signaling them to die. Here's an example of clear communication. There are some things called thycaloids that regulate hunger. Thycaloids are found in green vegetables. They're a great example of how food communicates with our body. These green discs inside of chloroplasts, they help generate energy from the sun. When consumed, thycaloids enter the gut and block the activity of the hormone lipase. Lipase digests fat. So inhibiting lipase slows fat breakdown and increases a sense of fullness. Thycaloids also stimulate two hormones, CCK and GLP-1. We've heard a lot about GLP-1 lately, which promotes satiety and decrease uh, the urge for sweets. So you can find thycaloids in raw spinach, kale, parsley, arugula, broccoli, and spirulina. Maybe we try a diet rich in GLP-1-like foods that help promote satiety and help decrease the urge for sweets before we have to take an injection or medication. Spinach, kale, parsley, arugula, broccoli, spirulina. When Dr. Casey Means makes a smoothie in the morning, she loads it with a dozen organic ingredients. She thinks through exactly what kind of conversation she wants to have with her body and her cells that day. Safety, strength, satiety, resilience. Understanding how different foods send specific messages to our cells can help us make different dietary choices, ultimately leading to improved health and well-being. So principle number three is all about how food can communicate with your cells. Principle number four out of six, principle number four, extreme food cravings are feedback from your cells that you're giving mixed messages. Cravings are so complex, involving hormones, brain regions, the microbiome. Fundamentally, they indicate that our cells are confused by our diet. Overcoming cravings involves clear communication with our body through the right food choices. Many people struggle with giving up their favorite foods, often feeling it's just too hard to resist the cravings. This is a sign that their cells or even their microbiome's needs are not being met, leading them to crave specific foods. Our cells in our microbiome use hunger, a hunger hormone secretion process, to, to push us to seek food that might meet their needs. Eating ourselves into a state of bad energy happens when food taps into addictive pathways rather than meeting our cells' needs. So things like chronic overnutrition, eating too much, strains our mitochondria, leading to fat buildup, and then insulin resistance. The best defense against this is eating real unprocessed food. Real unprocessed food, which activates the body's regulatory mechanisms to stop eating when needs are met. Unprocessed foods also bring more pleasure, making it easier to avoid unhealthy cravings. If we look at the impact of fructose, fructose, especially in high quantities from sources like high fructose corn syrup, which is in almost everything nowadays, 
It's one of the worst culprits. Liquid fructose, which became prevalent in the 1970s, drastically increased our sugar intake, leading to ATP depletion, which is our energy needs, mitochondrial oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction. This signal of starvation to our cells, inducing intense appetite and food-seeking behaviors while also storing sugar as fat, is not good. This survival mechanism is manipulated by the constant availability of high fructose corn syrup that is driving us to eat more and become food-seeking addicts. And food companies, they have perfected the science of glucose spikes to make food more addictive. Intense cravings often follow a blood sugar spike and, and then a crash, known as reactive hypoglycemia. Eating refined carbohydrates or foods with added sugar causes a surge of insulin to remove glucose from the bloodstream, leading to this crash that triggers cravings for high-carb snacks. By stabilizing your blood sugar, though, through dietary strategies, we can prevent this cycle and we can reduce those cravings. There's a really famous study that the NIH did on processed versus unprocessed foods. A study led by Dr. Kevin Hall at the NIH demonstrated the profound difference between consuming ultra-processed and unprocessed foods. Participants who ate unlimited ultra-processed foods consumed over 500 more calories per day compared to when those same participants ate unlimited unprocessed whole foods. They gained weight during the ultra-processed food period and they lost weight during the unprocessed food period. It was so clear. This study highlights how ultra-processed foods drive overeating and weight gain by confusing the body's satiety signals. And then if you look at Mark Schatzker's book, The End of Cravings, he explains that our insatiable desire for food stems from the variable reward of processed foods. Our body just can't accurately predict nutritional inputs from the ultra-processed foods. This drives us to keep seeking and consuming more. In contrast, eating unprocessed whole foods at consistent times during the day allows the body and the body's system to function smoothly, reducing cravings. Our body knows what to do with this food. The food industry uses the science of cravings to make food more addictive. Studying how specific combinations of ultra-processed foods reach the quote-unquote bliss point of pleasure. This drives us to consume more. Understanding this will help us realize that our food is engineered to confuse our bodies, to increase addiction, and to have us overconsume. The more food we eat, the more money they make. The solution? It's easy. Unprocessed whole foods. Eat unprocessed whole foods, providing you the best chance of meeting the diverse needs of your human and your microbiome cells, all while dim diminishing your cravings. Transitioning to unprocessed organic food for a month or maybe even two can significantly change your preferences and cravings, making it effortless to enjoy healthy food. You have to give it a couple of months, but it's doable. Those cravings for sugar, those cravings for those sweets can go away. So principle number four, extreme food cravings are feedback from your cells that you're giving mixed messages. Principle number five Ignore diet philosophies and focus on unprocessed food. Ignore diet philosophies. Diet controversies often lead to heated debates, but the reality is that different dietary approaches can all be beneficial if they focus on unprocessed whole foods. Whether it's a low-fat, high-carb diet, or if it's a high-fat, low-carb diet, both can lead to improved health markers like reduced liver fat, lower body weight, better insulin sensitivity, and decreased inflammation, the Mediterranean diet, which is more omnivorous, also shows similar benefits. The common thread is the emphasis on unprocessed whole foods. Countless posts from vegan health professionals on social media criticize carnivores and vice versa, yet both groups can thrive on their respective diets because they focus on unprocessed, nutrient-dense whole foods. The key is not the specific diet label, but the quality of the food consumed. When you eat clean, natural foods that energize you eliminate chronic symptoms. 
that, and they optimize your biomarkers. You are on the right track if you can consume food that is meant to be food. The body's ability to achieve similar health outcomes with different dietary inputs is just remarkable. It's crazy. There's, there's a reason why there are so many diet camps. Not all these people are uneducated. There, there are some very smart people in all of these camps, but they're so myopically focused on wanting to be right that they're not seeing the bigger picture. Whether you follow a plant-based diet or an animal-based diet, you can get the necessary molecular information for your cells through various sources as long as you get them the necessary information they need to thrive. There are some key nutrients from different sources that make this point. There's a thing called butyrate. This is a short chain fatty acid that is crucial for mitochondrial function and reduces depression and obesity risk. It can be produced by gut bacteria fermenting fiber in high fiber diets, or it can be uh, created and produced by the liver in low carb ketogenic diets as beta hydroxy butyrate. So there's two different ways to get butyrate. You can get it through eating fiber or you can get it through low carb ketogenic diets. Another example would be EPA and DHA. These are essential omega-3 fatty acids that are found in animal foods and algae. Now a plant-based diet provides ALA, which converts to EPA and DHA with the help of micronutrients like B vitamins and zinc and magnesium. Ensuring adequate micronutrient intake and reducing your omega-6 fats can also help to improve this conversion. So ALA in plants can be converted into EPA and DHA without having to consume animal-based foods, or you could just get it by eating fatty fish, animal-based foods. And then there's vitamin C. Found in colorful plants like bell peppers and tomatoes and citrus fruits for vegans, but it can also be found in organ meats like liver for carnivores. Both sources suffice for maintaining adequate vitamin C levels. So is it about being vegan? Is it about being carnivore? It's about giving your cells the nutrients they need. Focus on unprocessed foods. Instead of getting caught up in diet labels, focusing on consuming unprocessed foods is the goal. Grown in healthy soil, this approach will vastly improve your health by providing yourselves with the necessary nutrients to thrive. And then the last principle, principle number six in this chapter, was mindful eating, finding awe in your food. Love that. This principle encourages us to find awe in our food, helping us make healthier choices by appreciating the miraculous interaction between food and our bodies. Eating clean, healthy food in the 21st century just isn't easy. It requires conscious effort every single day to make healthy food decisions amidst a culture that is often promoting unhealthy choices. Tapping into a sense of awe and wonder about the food that you're eating can inspire us to make better choices, the best choices possible. Here are some reflections to help cultivate this appreciation. Energy from the sun. Every bit of energy stored in the plants that we eat originally came from that huge ball of fire millions of miles away. This energy travels all the way through space. It gets absorbed by the plant's chloroplasts, transforms into glucose, and is eventually consumed by us. Chloroplasts in plants are remarkably similar to mitochondria in humans which convert the glucose into ATP, powering our lives and our ability to think and love and live. When we die, our body's materials return to the earth, contributing to the growth of new plants and continuing this infinite cycle of transformation. What energy from the sun gets taken up by plants and then we eat the plants and the mitochondria that we have teamed up with millions of years ago, they process that into energy and then we one day die and all of it goes back into the cycle of life. Like if that isn't something that blows your mind, if you can't sit and think on that for hours and hours, then I, I, th I don't think you understand the concept. It is magical. 
if we think about how we inherited the mitochondria, mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells. We inherited all of our mitochondria entirely from our mothers. This maternal inheritance stretches back through millennia, forming an unbroken line of cellular energy production. Visualizing this lineage can deepen our respect for our bodies and inspire healthier food choices to honor our maternal legacy. Mitochondria began as independent bacteria that were engulfed by more complex cells, creating a powerful symbiotic relationship. This historical cooperation reminds us of the interconnectedness of all of life and the importance of nurturing our cells through mindful eating. All of this stuff is super magical. If you think about when you eat food, how can you not find awe in how all of this has transpired and how when we eat food, it gets broken down into small little tiny information that rebuilds into what we see in the mirror and how all of that is we're able to communicate with each other the electrical and chemical signals in our body creating life as we know it, insane. A, a teaspoon of healthy soil, if you just take a little teaspoon, it contains more living organisms than there are people on the planet. If you take healthy soil, a teaspoon, more living organisms in that teaspoon than there are of all the people on the planet. These organisms work tirelessly to convert air water, sunlight, soil, and seeds into the food that sustains us as human beings. Understanding this process and the damage done by industrial agriculture can motivate us to support regenerative farming practices that restore soil health and biodiversity. Our gut, our gut is a critical boundary between ourselves and the external world. We're actually kind of more like a donut if you think about the tube that goes from our mouth all the way out the other end, it's that tube, the food that goes through that is not even inside of us until it gets broken down and absorbed through that tube. Just as healthy emotional boundaries make relationships functional, a strong gut lining protects our bodies from harmful substances. Healing and strengthening this boundary with nutrient-dense, unprocessed foods reduce the inflammation that we see and enhances our overall health. Many societal issues, including violence, mental illness, developmental problems, chronic pain, all start with cellular dysfunction caused by oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, and chronic inflammation. By consuming nutrient-dense, unprocessed whole foods, we can combat these cellular issues, leading to healthier individuals and a healthier society. So practice mindful eating, taking a moment before eating to reflect on all of these concepts, expressing gratitude for our food and eating slowly can reinforce the principle of mindful eating by finding awe in the process of eating. We can make healthier choices and enhance our overall well-being. So just a quick recap here. The six principles of good energy eating are one food determines the structure of our cells and our microbiome two Eating is the process of matching our cellular needs with our oral inputs. Three, food is how you communicate with your cells. Four, extreme food cravings are feedback from your cells that you're giving mixed messages. Five, ignore the diet philosophies and just focus on unprocessed foods. And six, find awe in food. All right, everyone, that wraps up our discussion on the six principles of good energy eating. We've explored how food determines the structure of our cells, the importance of matching our cellular needs with our inputs, how food communicates with our cells and the significance and, and understanding and managing of our cravings. We've also went into the importance of focusing on unprocessed foods over any kind of diet philosophy and finding awe in food. And these principles are not just abstract ideas, but actionable steps that we can all take to improve our health. By embracing these principles, we can make informed, mindful choices that support our body's needs and promote good energy. Remember, every meal is an opportunity to nourish your body and support your long-term health. As always, I encourage you to take these insights and apply them into your everyday life. Reflect on what you eat. 
appreciate the miraculous process of food nourishing your body and make choices that align with your health goals. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Please share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps a ton if you could post a screenshot of this episode on your social media stories and include one takeaway that you learned. Tag me at living the dream underscore podcast or at coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you felt about what we shared in today's episode. We want to know. Message us with any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team and topics we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.